Shalom, friends. This is Akiva Gersh from Israel in Five, and I want to wish you a happy Passover and invite you to take part in a very important fundraising campaign from Mayor Panim. Mayor Panim is an organization that for many years and decades has been taking care of Israel's most needy populations, those living under the poverty line, including children, Holocaust survivors, soldiers as well. And now around the time of Passover, when people get together and they celebrate and they have beautiful meals together, Mayor Panim is making sure that all these populations and more have what they need, all the matzah, all the food, all the things that they need to make this holiday a joyous one. In addition to the populations I mentioned as well, they're helping families, communities that had to evacuate because of the attack on Israel in October 7th. So many of them still not in their homes. So please open up your heart, go to israel5.org forward slash donate. And please give what you can at this very, very special time and important time for those in Israel who need your help the most. Holocaust survivors, soldiers, evacuated families, and those living underneath the poverty line, including children. Please do what you can. Open your heart. We appreciate it so much. And have a great and happy Passover. The splitting of the sea for the ancient Israelites, one of the most amazing wonders of all time. But what can it teach us today in our everyday lives? Shalom, my friends. This is the Kiva Gersh with Israel in 5, where we give you everything Israel in five minutes. Please like and subscribe. And if you have any questions or want to keep the conversation going, please do so below in the comments. We're coming into the seventh day of Passover. And the seventh day of Passover is the day on which the sea split for the ancient Israelites. It's an incredible story. Just a week after being freed from slavery, after centuries of, of, of bondage, centuries of oppression and torture, the Israelites are free. And just a week later, a week later, right, they find themselves in one of the scariest positions ever for anyone, but especially a newly freed slave. They have the, the sea in front of them on either side, the, the unknown wilderness, and behind them, the Egyptian army running after them, led by Paro. What are they going to do? Where are they going to go? What's going to happen? Could this be the end of the story? The 10 plagues, the, the exodus, the leaving, the freedom for a week, just for this, for it to end so quickly? Well, we know that the, the Torah beautifully describes what happens at the moment of the splitting of the sea, but there's actually two stories that intertwine. One is that God uh, creates a wind all night long, and that wind pushes the, the waters apart, and of course the Israelites walk in between, and as soon as they're out, the waters come back uh, together and crash down on the Egyptians who have already entered into the, 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 the sea, uh, pursuing the Israelites, and they drown, and the Israelites see their oppressors Right, right in front of their eyes, disappear from this world. Right. The other story is that there was one man, one Israelite, Achshon ben Aminadav, that he saw the ocean and he said, well, there's, there's nothing we can do. God, if you're really going to save us, if you're really going to bring us to the land of Israel, we got to get through this. I'm not sure how it's going to happen, but I'm going to start walking. And he walks and he goes into the sea. And he doesn't stop. And he's like, God, if you want us to go, you got you to gotta provide a miracle. And he gets up to here. One more step and he's going to drown. And he looks up and exactly at that moment, God provides and does the miracle. It's just an incredible story. It's an incredible miracle. And in the seventh day of Passover, we celebrate that. And there's a beautiful passage in the Torah, in the book of Exodus, called Shira Tayam in Hebrew. That's the song that the Israelites sing immediately after the sea split upon seeing their salvation, upon experiencing their salvation. And they sing this beautiful song led by Moses. And it's recorded in the Torah. It's called the Song of the Sea, Shira Tayam. And on the seventh day of Pesach, Passover, many people have the custom to read that out loud or to sing it out loud in a community setting. It's a beautiful thing. The question, though, is what could this teach us? What could an ancient miracle from long ago something that we can't imagine ever seeing ever again in our lives. What can it teach us? Well, I think it can help us to look out for miracles, right? Because even though miracles don't happen today on the level that they did back then, the 10 plagues, the splitting of the sea, 
the giving of the Torah on Mount Sinai, all the different things that happen in the desert, knowing these stories, hearing them, learning, helps us to train our, 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 our beings, our minds, our belief, our emunah, our faith, into seeing that everything comes from God. Everything comes from God. And what was so amazing about uh, the splitting of the sea, what God couldn't do that? We believed before that God couldn't have done that. No, but that God did do it. And that God did that in the right moment, in the exact moment, in the, in the moment we needed it the most. And it helps us to understand that everything's from God, right? Every moment is from God. And therefore, every moment is a miracle, right? If we open our eyes to see it. Hearing these stories, believing in these stories helps us, uh, helps us, trains us to see the miracles that are with us every single day. In Jewish prayer, a few times a day, we say in one of our, our prayers, we say, you know, thank you for all the miracles that are around us, that are with us every single day. Really? People are seeing the splitting of the sea every day? People are seeing something like the 10 plagues every day? No. Right? But they're the everyday things that happen in our, in our lives, whether it's how our bodies work, whether it's how nature works. Whether it's the, the way events kind of, you know, just work out so perfectly sometimes, right? How when, you know, maybe something didn't work out so perfectly and then only later I realized, wow, that was for my best. That was for the best. It helps us to see these, these miracles, right? What are miracles? They're, they're, they're moments of realizing that everything's from God. And we can have those moments all the time, as often as we want. Realizing that everything, everything, everything is from God. Right? Not only the splitting of the sea, but especially the splitting of the sea, right? But even the everyday kinds of things that happen in, in, our, in our lives. Right? There's uh, many blessings in the Jewish tradition giving thanks to God and helping us to become more aware of the wonders in our lives, uh, the blessings in our lives, and to have gratitude for them. One that I think really helps us understand how well, everything is from God and it's all a miracle is after, after going to the bathroom. There's a blessing to say, thank you, God. It's in Hebrew. It's a whole little mini paragraph. But we say, basically, thank you for letting my, my body work the way that it does, right? And helping me to be healthy and strong and doing wonders through my body, right? It's an incredible thing. So this, this end of Passover, the seventh day of Passover, the day that we remember and we commemorate and we connect to the splitting of the sea, it help us to see all the miracles in our lives every single day, all around us, without fail, and understand where they all come from.